It is good to be with you this day of Pentecost. I'm thrilled to see all the different colors of the flames. Uh, earlier this morning, uh, somebody came up to me and she said, oh, I forgot it was Pentecost and she was wearing blue. And she said, oh yeah, but remember, blue is the hottest of the flames. <laughs> I'm like, leave it to the people in my congregation to be creative. I, I really like that. Anyway, it's good to be with you as we celebrate this great holiday in the church life. We'll hear more about that later. Uh, lots of different announcements in the bulletin. Be sure to notice that after worship today, you can join some folks over in our gymnasium as they prepare for the 2020 flea market. They are sorting and clearing and boxing items that will be up for sale in March next year. If you can help with that, they're here for a couple hours after worship uh, doing that every month. Uh, and so that would be great help. I want to thank Jerry Fortunato. Jerry waved to us over there. Jerry is our creative director of plants today. Um, and Mesquite Valley Growers for donating all of these plants, which are actually going back to Mesquite Valley Growers. So uh, they dug through all their plants to help us find stuff in the f colors of the flames of the spirit and let us borrow them during worship. Uh, and so they'll be going back to Mesquite Valley Growers, which is just like heaven on earth. Um, if you ever want to just go take a walk and meditate, I encourage you to go to Mesquite Valley Growers in town. It is just extraordinarily beautiful. And, and yes, that's a way of saying thank you to them uh, for donating and helping us uh, decorate for Pentecost. But it is just one of my favorite places to just go and to think. Uh, notice also in the bulletin our quick announcement about helping in the migrant crisis. Uh, your mission team has been very hard at work over this last week. They've met with some folks who are running some of the programs here in Tucson, particularly over at the monastery that is housing a lot of the asylum-seeking uh, migrants that are here in town. I've been asked, why are we going to, to help illegals uh, in this church? We are not. We are going to look into helping people who have come into our country illegally, who are a part of the asylum-seeking program. It means they have met with Border Patrol, <coughs> and as a part of our, our country's uh, programming, they have met criteria that gives at least credible evidence that they are in danger having left their home. Most of them are from Guatemala. And so they are here now in the asylum program where they have a sponsor here in the United States. Most of them have a previous family member who has come and has gained citizenship here in this country and will sponsor them. And so until they're able to get to their sponsor, they're here in Tucson. And what happens is Border Patrol picks them up, gets them into the system, uh, finds those that are credible in the asylum program, uh, gets them registered, uh, gets them set into a court date that can sometimes be a year or two away uh, because of the sheer numbers of folks, and then simply releases them um, into our city. And they have no resources and no way of getting help and getting to the places they need to get. So uh, folks have been helping them at the monastery in particular. The monastery is closing at the end of July. Um, and so uh, churches are being asked to step up to be some centers that may take some folks. It looks like uh, we will be one of those centers that one week a month uh, will be on a rotation uh, basis with some other churches. And we may take 20 or 30 people uh, in a night uh, who would stay. That means that we will need people to help us provide breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks in between. We're going to need people who will come uh, and help with activities during the day uh, to keep kids entertained, to help parents have something to do. Uh, we are going to need some Spanish-speaking folks who can help these folks as they work with Greyhound to get their bus tickets uh, that are paid for by their family members. Um, and then get them to the bus at the appointed time and make sure they get on the correct bus. There are just all sorts of ways that we can help. We're getting cots probably through the Red Cross. We're going to need sheets and blankets and pillows. We're going to need uh, towels for showers. We're going to need people who could stay overnight. Um, all sorts of different ways. Next Sunday, we'll have some sign-ups out and hope that you will this week figure out ways that you can be a part of that. More than likely, we're looking at probably sometime in late July 
uh, by the time we begin uh, any of that housing. Now that's if all that's planned right now comes to fruition. We really don't know what's going to be needed, um, and that happens week to week, but we're doing what we can to prepare. Uh, most importantly, I think you can pray uh, for folks who are leaving some very desperate situations and are now coming into yet another desperate situation and look for ways that we can help them. So um, all of that will come with more information over in the weeks. I just ask you to look at your schedules and your abilities uh, and be prepared to grab blankets and pillows and uh, those kinds of things out of your closets that you are no longer needing uh, that we can use, particularly in twin size, but you know you can make a king size fit on a twin cot. We, you just make it happen. Uh, and so we are blessed to be a congregation that has a campus, has a washer dryer, has showers, uh, has two large kitchens, and lots of extra space. So uh, we'll see how God is leading us and what we're doing, uh, but that's where we are for now. Your mission team will be busy again this coming week. They're going to go to a couple of churches that are already doing some housing. They're going to be talking with people that are helping in those churches to see what are the best practices and what are the things you don't want to do uh, so that we can uh, be off and running when it's our time uh, with all that information. So keep us in your prayers this week. Um, I think those are all the major announcements. I invite you now to take a deep breath, get yourself uh, directed and... and um, centered into God's spirit uh, and pray now eat just on your own to be aware of God's presence let's pray Hear the story of Pentecost from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. Supposing they were up early drinking mimosas, Peter then stood up. And in the midst of the crowds that were questioning, Peter began to preach and to tell the people about all the deeds and the wonders of this Jesus who had been crucified, dead, buried, and raised from the dead. And he told them the story. And later, 
in the second chapter of Acts, at the 37th chapter, we pick up the story again. Now when the crowds heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, and to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Come this day and join with the thousands who have heard the word proclaimed and give your life to God in Jesus the Christ. Let's rise and sing our praise. Come, O Spirit, with your sound, like a wind quick rushing. Come from heaven and stir our hearts, each disciple touching. Mold our actions to your will, you our service giving. More within our fellowship, transform now our lives. Sings your praise as Lord and King, giver of salvation. And let's pray together. Gracious God, you spoke just one word, light. And there it was. With just one word you created. And then you breathed your spirit into all creation. Giving us a chance to be alive on this earth. And the promise of being alive with you forever in your heavenly realm. You're amazing. You create, you redeem, and you sustain. You're in every part of life filling us with your Spirit, moving us to follow you more faithfully all the time. Help us, O oh God, to grasp on to your Spirit of courage. We are sorry for the times we've been afraid, too afraid to share what we know about you, fearful that we might say the wrong thing. 
Lord, use even us to share your gospel just as you used those early disciples. Please, forgive us for our mistakes. And through your Holy Spirit, shape us into the faithful beings you made us to be. Use this time of worship to know that we want to be at your side even as you're already at ours. So that our living is about your loving. So that we give to you all the honor and glory you so deserve because we know you do forgive us. And we are grateful to you. Be honor and glory now and forevermore. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. 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 be seated and I invite our young children to come join me for the children's moment. Do you want to come? Come on. I know you're probably the only youngest one here but it's okay. Dad can come with you. Dads, grandpas, kids are shy. They're welcome to come with them. I love the colors. Come on. We're going to sit right up here. Dad, you're welcome to stay up with them. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I like your shirt. Very nice. Uh oh. Do you notice anything about my shoes? I'm not as smart as your dad. He wore slip ons. One of my shoes is untied. I woke up this morning and the other one was tied, right? So watch. Ready? tie. It's still untied. Do you know how to tie shoes? Would you, would you, do you know how to tie shoes? Can you tie my shoe? No. He's smart. He wore Velcro. Are you good at tying shoes? No. Caitlin, will you tie that shoe for me? Well, okay, watch. Over and under, a bunny ear on the right, a bunny ear on the left, over and under and pull tight. <laughs> now I want you to know it took me a long time to learn that. In fact, to this day, I should go to a psychiatrist because I still remember my kindergarten report card and I, was, I got a, a U, an unsatisfactory, in knowing my right from my left and how to tie my shoes. I know. Bless you for your sympathy. So it took me a long time to figure out how to tie shoes. It took me a lot of practice and a lot of learning. And sometimes it's like that. Some things are hard to learn, and it takes lots of practice. And some things, it's just like sometimes you just kind of, you wake up and you know how to do it. And, and you, just, you just do it. And we're talking today about a story with the disciples who had studied with Jesus, they had learned about Jesus for three years. But suddenly one day, all of a sudden they started speaking in languages they didn't even know and they didn't even study and 
They did some things that they didn't expect they could do. But what they learned is that God was with them in the things that they had a hard time learning to do and in the things that came really easy to them. And you're going to run into some things as you grow up that are really hard to learn, and it gets discouraging. I mean, I don't know about you. Are, are you um, have you taken calculus yet? Because <laughs> when I was at the U of A, I didn't do very well in calculus. And it's hard to learn, and it gets discouraging. And I'd rather do the things that come easy. But sometimes in the hard and difficult things that are hard to learn and I have to practice over and over again, I, I feel pretty good because really, watch, now it doesn't take me too long. I really don't even have to think about it. I can talk. I don't even have to do the bunny ears anymore. I can just tie my shoe. That was worth the raise. <laughs> um, but hard work sometimes, things that are hard are discouraging. Don't let them get you discouraged. Keep trying. Keep trying. Because God is with you in those things too. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for the kinds of things that we can just sort of figure out on our own and, and do. And thank you for the ways that you help us through things that are hard and, and are difficult to learn. Thank you for being with us all the time. Amen. Thanks. You can go back and sit down. Thank you. Thanks, Dad.
Be sure to take time during our offering to sign in on those red guest books. But know also that your mission team is helping us be involved in the community in all sorts of ways. Over the last year, we've become a partner with Sister Jose's Women's uh, Shelter here in Tucson, helping women in all sorts of needs, uh, especially in ways of uh, interviewing and finding jobs and, and uh, different items like that that they need to get back up on their feet. Um, and we discovered a couple of weeks ago that they were in need of some very special items. And so two of your mission team members went out shopping, and they will pray and bless and introduce to you uh, what we've done because of your already ongoing generous giving to the mission of this church. Let's watch the video. Dear Lord, here we go. We are in Walmart today, and I'm Nancy, and this is Vera, and we're from Christ Presbyterian Church on the mission team. And we are here to bless these underwear that we are going to take to um, Sister Jose's. They always are in need of underwear for these women. So we're going to say a little prayer. And uh, we're, Lord, so grateful that we have the money that we can buy almost $150 worth of underwear. <laughs> and um, we know that you have blessed us. And we know that these... Uh, new uh, garments will help these women um and vera why don't you say something too and lord we thank you for us being able to do this and be able to provide underwear that the ladies like god bless sister jose's for taking care of the homeless here in tucson thank you lord we really appreciate this and we know that you're in our life every day amen amen why do you know? I mean, I mean, really, who thinks to go to Walmart and bless underwear? <laughs> this congregation does, and it knows the value of fresh, clean, new underwear for women who are in need. Thank you for generosity. Let us give in this time of offering.
God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Praise God above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Gracious God, thank you for blessings in life that are far too many to count. Well, we want others to count their blessings too, so guide us as a congregation in the faithful use of these monies so that we can buy new underwear for women who are in need, so that we can do whatever it is you call us to do in this world, to share the good news of who you are in Jesus our Christ. Thank you for letting us be a part of it all. Amen. You may be seated. The day of Pentecost was really nothing new. Remember at the beginning of the second chapter of Acts, it says, when the day of Pentecost had come, Pentecost was not a new holiday in the Jewish tradition. It was known probably more uh, commonly called Shavuot, the festival of weeks. It always happened 50 days after Passover. It was the commemoration of the time after the Passover event, remember prior to the Exodus, when the Spirit had passed over, the Hebrews were allowed to live and then exited out into the Sinai Peninsula for the 40-year Exodus. And 50 days into that trip in the Sinai Peninsula, they found themselves at the base of Mount Sinai where God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, the Torah, the law. And so on the day of Pentecost, on the day of Shavuot, it's a celebration of the giving of the law of the creating, the formation of the people again as the people of God, God claiming them. Later in the book of Exodus, um, as the people really started to establish themselves, they also began to celebrate the first crop of wheat that would come in and all of what wheat would bring to them and the foods that they could make from it and the sustenance that they gained from having the wheat. Remember, in what you and I know as the Last Supper. Jesus and the disciples were commemorating that time of the Passover. And as Jesus took the bread and the cup, he took the meaning even deeper, which is what Jesus always did, which is what God always does, always taking things deeper and farther. And so this time, on the day of Pentecost, on the celebration of Shavuot, God took the meaning deeper. And suddenly, while the disciples were gathered like tongues of fire, the Spirit moves in their midst, and somehow they're all feeling the Spirit. You know it, right? Okay, you don't know it. You're Presbyterians. Okay? But they were feeling the Spirit. Hands were raising. People were speaking in languages. People outside the house were listening. They probably exited the house in all of their excitement. And the disciples began to speak in languages they had never studied. And they spoke fluently. And they spoke in languages they didn't even understand what they were saying. When I was in college taking uh, Spanish here at the U of A, I prayed every day for the day of Pentecost. <laughs> and then when I went for my master's degree at seminary in Princeton um, and I had to learn Hebrew and Greek, I prayed every day for Pentecost. Because I am not good at learning languages. I struggle with my own native one. Wouldn't it be nice to suddenly speak any language without studying it and be fluent with the perfect accent? That's what happened that day. God took it deeper. 
The presence of the Holy Spirit overtook the disciples and they did exactly what they were unprepared to do. They spoke and shared the gospel story in languages they had never studied. It's always like that with God. You end up accomplishing things that you never knew you could and doing things that you're totally unprepared to do. I think about Noah. Nowhere in Scripture does it say that Noah was a professional boat builder. But he built an ark, a huge ark, before it even rained. I think of Sarai, who had prayed and, and tried to prepare all her life to become a mom, but I don't know about you, after 80, I would be totally unprepared to be a parent for the first time. And that's when Sarah got pregnant. And she laughed, wouldn't you? Until you cried. Right? I think of Paul, also known as Saul, who prepared all his life to eradicate Christianity and suddenly became the greatest prolificator of Christians. I think of Phoebe in the New Testament story, who in a man's world funded the church. She wasn't prepared for that. And I think about a whole bunch of disciples who had followed Jesus for three years, seen him do some incredible things, did a full, few cool things themselves, but suddenly one day spoke in languages they had never studied, shared the Gospels in languages they didn't understand, and 3,000 people became believers because of it. How cool is that? They did things they were totally unprepared for. It's that way with us. It's that way with God sometimes. And it's that way for us in sharing our faith. It's that way even for me. And I'm up here nearly every Sunday sharing my faith. You'd think I'd be just totally comfortable with it and really good at it. But in the everyday moments of life, nothing can really prepare you for sharing your faith. You know those moments when somebody comes to you and simply asks you a question of faith. We all fumble with our words. We all stumble through our theology. We all struggle in our faith because we have doubts and questions and hurts and wonderings. But it is amazing what happens when the Holy Spirit flows through you and you begin sharing your faith in ways that you were totally unprepared to do. It was right after a funeral. And a man that I had never met came to me after the funeral to thank me for leading he told me a little bit about of his story and how he had stepped away from his faith and the congregation that he had been a part of. But after the funeral, he was moved. And he came to me to let me know that he was going back to his faith and back to his congregation. He did let me know that it wasn't really anything that I had said. Just somehow in the funeral time together in that worship experience, he felt the movement of the Holy Spirit in his life, and he knew it was time to go back to his faith. Now, I was excited. Yes, I had won one for Jesus. Certainly, I was going to get to go to heaven if that was my day. Right? And as he left, he turned back to me and said, Oh, by the way, I'm Jewish. (laughs) 
And inside myself, I giggled and realized that those moments weren't about me. Those were moments about God and what God was doing through me. And how incredible it is that God works through any of us to accomplish God's ways and to draw people back to him in all the different ways that people come to God and the different traditions in which God reveals God's self. And I realized I need to get out of my own way. And I need to get out of the way of the Holy Spirit and simply let the Spirit work through me because that's when power really flows. In 2006, Charles Roberts was a milk truck driver in Pennsylvania. And for whatever unknown reason, Charles Roberts decided that day to enter an Amish school for girls and opened fire, killing five of them and wounding five and more others. It was unbelievable anguish, not only across our country and throughout our world, but especially for that Amish community who had the courage and the faith and the spirit enough to stand and say, we forgive him. And then in mass, that Amish community went to the graveside of the shooter and surrounded his wife and children in an ark of love and attended his burial. And went home then and gathered up monies and gave it to his widow to help her now care for her three young children. What do you do to prepare for that? In 2016, a reporter went back to the community to look at what life was like 10 years later. He discovered that the shooter's mother was going to the home of one of the young women who had been injured, shot in the brain. And there, the mother of the shooter was caring for that young injured woman, helping bathe her, wash her hair, dry her hair, fill her feeding tube, read to her, move her from her wheelchair to her bed. How do you prepare for that? You don't. And you can't. As the second chapter of Acts comes to the con- comes to a conclusion, hear these words of the story. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. There are things in your life for which you can prepare, and there are things in your life that you will never be fully prepared for. But this story of faith and grace is a story that we not only claim, but we are called to proclaim. And I know you don't feel worthy of that all the time. I know that you like I, fumble with your words, stumble through the theology, struggle with your own faith and your questions and your doubts and all of those kinds of challenges that every one of us have. But don't let your fear stop you from allowing the Spirit to flow through you. 
because it's not about you. It's about God and what God would do even through any of us in this room or any of you watching online. The Holy Spirit is moving in our lives all the time, wanting to use us to share the good word of God and draw people to God. How all of that happens is of no matter to us. That it's through us is an incredible joy. You are never going to be fully prepared for it. So quit worrying about it and just let the Spirit flow through you when the Spirit gives you the chance. Amen? Amen. We're going to pray together. Speaking of somebody who always lets the Spirit flow, uh, let me reintroduce to you uh, one of the faithful members of our church, Norma. Oh, oh. Our dear friend Norma was a part of this church for years and years and years and raised generations in this church um, and moved uh, several years ago to uh, live with her daughter uh, and their family in Kansas. Um, instead of her family moving here. I know, whatever. Um, and uh, Norma's back in town this week uh, clearing out her home uh, here in Tucson to sell and to live permanently with Susan and her family. Um, Norma and her husband Dick, faithful members of this church. Some of you may remember years ago when they were in charge of the stewardship campaign and they brought their rowboat into the sanctuary and set it up up front and they, every Sunday they would sit in their rowboat and talk about stewardship and they would cast their fishing line uh, out into the congregation and they would reel in members of the congregation who would talk about their stewardship giving. It was one of the most brilliant and fun, uh, weird um, <laughs> stewardship campaigns that we've ever had in the life of our church that just celebrated the joy of giving uh, and the joy of faith. So as we come to prayer today as a congregation, I invite you to keep Norma and her family in prayers as they move long term uh, to be together in Kansas. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for all the saints who are with us. Those who surround us in person today, like Norma. Those who surround us in spirit, even like her beloved Dick. And all of our loved ones who've gone before that have made this church what it is a place where your spirit moves and draws people closer to you. May we always be open to the movement of your Holy Spirit in our lives, Lord, so that everybody will come to know you. Help us catch the courage that your Holy Spirit gives us to share the word in ways that will draw people to you. Help us to get out of your way and simply let you move through us. We love you too, Lord. And we thank you for allowing us to be a part of this story. Wherever we are, work your way through us. Here we are. Send even us. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill us anew with faith. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. 
Amen. Let's rise and sing. Stop worrying about being fully prepared. You won't be. You can't be. The news is too good and too big. And simply let God do what God has always done. Use us to proclaim God's grace. It's about God. Let's keep it that way. And when it is about God, it's about peace. So share that peace with one another before you leave the sanctuary and share it with everyone you meet till we meet again. Live in peace. Amen.